Welcome back once again, Sec Plus Preppers. I am Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo Security Plus questions of the day. Every single day I ask you two questions to help you in your studies. Let's make magic. You know, when I woke up this morning, I was feeling very V6-y. Um, that sounds weird. I was feeling very IP V6-y. I'm 260 for my shirt. No, it's still not working. But let's go ahead and try this out. I got two questions for you today on IP version 6. My first question for you is, by what mechanism does IP version 6 resolve IPv6 addresses to their corresponding MAC addresses? There's some answer choices for you. Go ahead and look those over. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play. And we'll talk it all through. All right, choice number one, ARP. Address resolution protocol. IP version 6, one of the big celebrated things about IP version 6 was no more ARP, woohoo! Um, ARP is very much a protocol that is bolted onto the side of IP version 4 in order to give us functionality for IP version 4 in Ethernet networks, and uh, because it was kind of an afterthought. Now, IP version 6 has been around for, you know, 20 years. But um, they knew that it was going to be running in Ethernet networks, and so they actually built the resolution mechanism directly into IP. So, no, it does not use ARP to go in and do that. Nor does it use the second option, which is broadcast, because technically broadcasts don't exist in IP version 6 anymore. We got rid of those in exchange for what they refer to as the all nodes multicast. We don't really broadcast in IP version 6 networks anymore, even though we can still accomplish a very similar thing using a specific type of multicast. Next two choices I put in there just to mess with you, DNS, the domain name system, absolutely not. DNS does what DNS is so often and so for so long done, which is to resolve host names to IP addresses. NetBIOS, uh, NetBIOS isn't even supported in IP version 6, so we don't even want to talk about it. So no, that is also not how we do it. WINS? Really? Seriously? No. Okay, WINS and NetBIOS go together. And we don't have support for NetBIOS in IP version 6, so what need have we of WINS in IP version 6? So not going to need that either. That leaves us with the last choice, which is ICMP multicast. And that is absolutely the correct answer. Now, it's more involved than that. There's the whole notion of neighbor discovery, where using ICMP multicast packets, nodes that are using IP version 6 will send out neighbor solicitations in order to resolve the MAC address of a particular IP version 6 address. We also have uh, router solicitations, which falls in the same umbrella, being able to go in and find out who your routers are in the network as well. And that's also an ICMP multicast. So uh, a lot of the different things that we had in IP version 4 that were these sort of add-on protocols, we have simply now taken and Vacu suck. sucked up into IP version 6 in the form of an ICMP multicast packet. All right, here comes question number two. Which of these are key features of IP version 6? Go ahead and click on pause, give those a read, and then we'll talk about each one of them uh, when you're ready. All right, first two answer choices gives you a choice between 48-bit and 128-bit address spaces. Um, it's a 128-bit address space. That's probably the one thing that it seems like almost everybody knows about IP version 6 addresses is that they're freakishly long and they're nasty to look at because they're all written in hexadecimal. Uh, but when they created the 128-bit address space, which is four times longer than the IP version 4 address space, uh, the, they did it because they never wanted to have to have the conversation again about we don't have enough IP addresses. So by making it a 40, or excuse me, a 128-bit address space as opposed to a 48-bit address space or a 64-bit address space, um, certainly which would have been a lot bigger, we kind of having learned the lessons of the past saw that you know we'll probably consume that too. So let's make this junk crazy big, huge, 340 undecillion, some obscene number. Whoa. Uh, so that we don't have to have this conversation again in 30 years. So that's part of the reason why it's such a gigantically enormous address space. Next choice, NAT not required. This is true. This is one of the sort of big selling points and also one of the big giant asterisks 
points of IP version 6 is that NAT as we currently know it is no longer required in IP version 6. Um, ad, NAT is an address conservation mechanism that's allowed IP version 4 to continue a lot longer than it otherwise would have. And because the IP version 6 address space is so large, we no longer need that address translation functionality. So, the NAT that we do today, the NAT that most of us are familiar with, which is really port address translation, uh, would technically now be referred to as NAT 4.4. You're NATing from an IP version 4 network to an IP version 4 network, so NAT 4.4. NAT 6.6, NATing from an IP version 6 network to an IP version 6 network is the one that technically doesn't need to exist or by standard does not exist. That's not to say that there's not NAT 6.6 is out there, but we don't want to talk about that. Um, there are other kinds of NAT, most notably NATing from IP version 4 networks to IP version 6 networks or vice versa. So NAT still exists in IP version 6, but not the NAT that we've all known and loved and or hated for all these past years. So it's NAT 6.6 that doesn't really exist uh, com in contrast to NAT 4.4 like we have today. SLAC, S-L-A-A-C, Stateless Address Auto Configuration, or SLAC. SLAC is the ability for an IPv6 node to get a usable IPv6 address with seemingly no help whatsoever. By quick comparison, if you look at IPv4 today, there's two ways that you get an IP address. One is to statically configure the node with an IP address. The other is to use DHCP. Both of those options still exist in IP version 6. However, we added another one that we call Slack, which is the capability for you as an IP version 6 node to receive an advertisement from a router telling you what the prefix is for the network and then for you to then come up with your own host identifier, either by doing some fancy stuff with your own MAC address to generate a host identifier or just by randomly picking a 64-bit host identifier. But that's the essence of what stateless address auto configuration is all about. And it's one of the big selling points of IPv6, where you can just take a node, plop it onto a network, and assuming that network is configured for IPv6, automagically the node can talk without you having to set up DHCP or even going to statically configure it. Super sweet, right? All right, let's look at the other choices. One is TCP header improvements. There's IP header improvements, but there's no TCP header improvements. So that's a little bit of trickery on my behalf, um, so pay close attention. How about the next one, Type 0 routing header? Ha <laughs> ha! Google that junk a little bit. Type 0 routing header was actually a big, dang it, kind of moment in IPv6 history because effectively what Type 0 routing headers allowed for was um, uh, source routing of packets that allowed all kinds of crazy denial of service opportunities. So they had to hold, go in and deprecate the entire Type 0 routing header. So we don't even use that junk anymore. So no, that is not a key feature of IP version 6. That was one of those, oh, we inherited that junk from IP version 4. We should not have brought that with us, but we did. So then we had to kick it to the curb afterwards. Next one, words are important. IPsec is enabled by default. No, it's not. IPsec is supported by default. It is not enabled by default. It is mandatory that an IP version 6 capable node support IPsec. It is not mandatory that an IP version 4 capable node support IPsec. And that's a subtle distinction. I read a, an IP version 6 book many years ago that said that IPsec was enabled by default and that just could not be farther from the truth. The, the fact of the matter is, is that you have support for IPsec by default, but it is not enabled by default. And then the final choice says that there are improvements to ARP, uh, not unless you call kick an ARP completely to the curb an improvement. So no, we didn't improve ARP in IP version 6, we got rid of ARP in IP version 6, which is what the whole previous question was all about, was we don't use ARP, we use uh, neighbor solicitations and router solicitations in the form of network discovery to go in, or excuse me, neighbor discovery in order to be able to go in and find other nodes in the network. So no, there's no improvements to ARP for that. So to summarize the right answers here, first one is great big, huge, ginormous 128-bit address space. Second correct answer was that no NAT is required, at least not NAT in the traditional sense. Traditional meaning the IP version 4 sense of the use. All right, I hope you enjoyed those questions. I love me some IP version 6, so hopefully anything that you encounter on your exam that's IP version 6 related, I'm going to help you plug through that. And uh, make sure you click on the like button, which I believe is probably right around yonder, and the subscribe button should be right over Honder. Um, so click on those so you get these videos every single day or for at least until you're done taking your exam. Then you probably don't want to see me ever again. But um, I do them every single day. I appreciate you being here. Leave comments below. I'll see you tomorrow.